And it's like having a baby. You can't put it back in. It's great to see everybody here again today. Um, obviously, it's back of house banter. Today, it's going to be slightly different twist to the usual back of house banter. I'm actually going to be handing over to Michael, who's going to be hosting today's show for us. So, um, Michael, off you go. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. When you said back of back of house banter, I thought you said back of house band. And I was like, <laughs> what are we going to be doing in this session? Are we going to be having a real jam along and a and a whole lot of fun, but uh, yeah, let's get serious. Because I've I've got a whole lot of really hard questions for Louise because uh, she likes to be well prepared. But uh, <laughs> thanks, Amy. The, 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 this is really just a, a recap of of a really cool conversation we had a while ago down in Cape Town. Um, really about uh, hospitality technology, more specifically around AI, because obviously things are changing quite dramatically and some industries are faster than others. If you are Boeing, you're probably changing a lot faster than anyone else because your planes are falling out of the sky, literally, as we speak. <laughs> I think I'm driving from now on to all the hotels we're gonna stay in. But this this is really, uh, sorry, this is banter. Now, now you've got the banter part of me going. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let me introduce myself. Uh, no, in fact, let me not introduce myself. Louise, let me be more, um, chivalry than that, and allow you to introduce yourself first. Uh, my mother would be chivalrous. Disappointed. Chivalrous. <laughs> yeah, chivalrous, yeah. please. <laughs> uh, chivalrous. Okay, yeah, Louise. Chivalrous. Um, okay, thanks, Michael. Yes, I'm Louise uh, Hibbert, and I um, represent SHR Group. Um, we provide a range of software applications which are powered by AI specifically for the hotel industry. Um, we utilize these AI agents across these applications, uh, CRS, CRM, uh, revenue management tool, um, and we also have peripheral services like digital marketing uh, and web design too, um, just supporting our hotel partners around the world. Let me follow on here from Louise. I'm Jose Suarez, I'm the Heights Director of the Capital and basically in charge of anything with an electrical current running through it apparently. But my mandate more importantly within the context of this discussion is finding useful and meaningful ways to work with the information and the data we have in this business to do some really cool stuff in terms of creating great guest experiences and in turn also creating great experiences for our staff. And that's critical. It's it's both sides of the equation. Amy, thank you for allowing me to host this this uh, show as a once off. And and is my and I'm of TerraFlow, and we we're a. My name is Michael Kahn, and I'm the CEO of TerraFlow, and we we really are an AI technology business that helps our clients prepare for an AI future. And I think the world's changing so dramatically um, that this is such an important conversation. And if we can just actually kick off on, on the necessity of AI in, in a hospitality, you know, everyone's talking about AI, but let's understand the need versus the want. You know, I remember being in a call about IoT and the chap who was uh, on the other side of it was saying to me, everyone wants to talk about IoT, but no one wants to buy it. It's an interesting conversation, but it's not a strategic initiative. So let me start with you, Jose, in terms of the necessity of AI in hospitality and the, the experience that you've had in, at the capital. It's a fantastic question. I think it's the most pertinent question for everything because it applies to everybody wanting to go into this chapter of AI. So how important it is mm. understanding its value and understanding you know, what you're going to do with it because it could be a poison pill that's going to unleash a monstrous uh, you know, budget spending spree. And I think the problem is here, a lot of people don't actually know, particularly in the hospitality space, they don't really know what it is that they want to do. They just know that AI is this cool word at the moment, and I've got to have it in my strategy, and it's got to be part of my strategy. Um, what are you going to be doing with it? So I think, you know, bringing it back right to beginning basics, understanding what your problems are, understanding what you want to solve, how they're going to create great experiences for the guests, how that in turn is going to generate revenue for the business, and then dialing it back through process and going, do I need AI for that, first of all? Okay, could it be done through some other more commonly used, widely available uh, methods? 
And then when you get to that point, you know, find a good partner as well. Right? You know, if you don't have a skill set inside of your business, find a good partner who's going to be able for you to say, you know, your long term vision or what you're trying to do is actually going to have reward. It's worthwhile doing. And, you know, your your investment isn't that big because I think a lot of it is as well as going, you know, is the data and the, and the, and the rest of it and the rest of it really. You know, this is really this is really it is a necessary thing because without it, it is going to be hard to be competitive. but you have to be ready to do it and you have to do it in the right way because also the, the you know the converse of that is wasteful and you're going to create bad experiences and your staff are going to hate you and your guests are going to hate you yes very much so louise amy have you got any thoughts on this topic yeah i, I think the use of ai particularly in this day and age is essential because i think it can automate a lot of mundane tasks it can also help surface data and insights that actually otherwise would perhaps be more of a manual task. So I think what it does is it frees up hoteliers, particularly those more in operational roles, to be more operational and to support and help um, their team and their guests more readily. Yeah, and I will agree with you there, Louise, when we look at like reporting that ops teams have to do within the hospitality, you know, AI is going to be really amazing for crunching two or three years worth of data where a human that takes them quite a long time to be able to identify those trends and make operational decisions. So AI is definitely going to have its place. You know, my concern is sometimes when you give AI to colleagues or or, or people that are supposed to respond to guests and that sort of thing, <laughs> you need to kind of be really savvy because some people will just do AI, let it do the work and then send it off and it really reads like AI, right? We still want our messaging to feel like it's really organic, especially with the responding to online reviews, you know, because are we gonna see AI being, you know, a negative impact within your online reputation or is it gonna be a positive for you? So where you decide to utilize AI, be really careful and have expectations and rules in place to make sure that it's used in the right way and not just so, People who are maybe on the lazier side just think, oh, great, it's going to do my job for me. It's supposed to enhance it, not do it for you. I see that hand. That's that hand. So I just think, and I think the one important thing here is understand the difference between chat GPT and an AI <laughs> and using AI. Because everyone's so excited about Gen AI. It is super cool. If you ever wanted to do Batman riding, a skateboard in his underpants eating a pizza. Super cool. You can <laughs> pump out some really awesome, funny images in Mid Journey, which I've, I've done a lot of. And it isn't that. It's, it is important, but people just need to understand what it actually is, because it's not just gen generative AI is a form of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's going to be one of the things going to drive these, these awesome engagements. And then I think your other side, particularly. One thing I learned in hospitality is the ops of the business don't like change. So get that buy-in from that level so that they understand what its value is going to be in the long term because you need them to, to help you steer it in the right way. I think also yeah. touching on that point, Jose, you're going to have a lot of team concern that it's going to take their role away from them. So that's the, that's the intention, though. Have you not seen Terminator? It's a great move. It ends well. <laughs> that's the intention. But really, well, you know, well, it's... It should be enhancing, enhancing roles, doing those mundane tasks, not really replacing Absolutely. humans, in my opinion. So when you put, get buy-in from your team and you involve them in that thinking process, that's going to make them feel much more comfortable about their jobs. You've got to remember that we're all in hospitality, right? The fundamentals of hospitality is, is never really going to change. It's about going from your home to another home or another experience. I think the fundamentals of hospitality are not going to change. It's going to be people about people. Always. Is that right? Is, can I challenge that though? And I, I want to talk a bit more about the, the, the of AI efficiency and human employment. And I think it's a really interesting point because um, I disagree on the chat GPT. I put all my legal documents through it and it gives me a darn good insight and understanding on my legal documents. So I think there's a place for it, but I, and I, but I do also agree, sorry, Jose, but I do agree that there are different types of AI. You know, there's predictive, there's regression, there's generative, et cetera, et cetera. 
But if we look at technology, what technology has always done for us is it's replaced human capabilities to allow humans to express greater potential ultimately. And we look at the world today, it's in a state of absolute chaos and a large portion of this is technology. So there is a, a deep philosophical conversation that I don't want to have on this call. But talking about the idea of the guest experience, you know, Amy, I do agree. It, everything is about an exchange of emotion. You know, we're on a, a, a Teams hangout here and the emotion gets cut off. You know, the intimacy of the conversation gets cut off. But, <laughs> but, oh, but ultimately, <laughs> there we go, Jose. There's a lot of love in the room. <laughs> there is lots of love in the room. But, but, but in all seriousness, there are ways you can improve the quality of the experience by replacing humans. It's, you know, so Jose, how have you done this at the Capitol? Replace the human, well, I mean, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you a good a good example of where we yes. put it in, and just just just, I do believe in ChatGPT. What I'm trying to make <laughs> certain <laughs> people understand, no, and it's important. Is is it not? You, the, no, I agree. It it is saying. not the thing. Okay, but how how have we? Look, we've we've done it in a number of places. Okay, so but if we're talking because we've already introduced it for rate management, we've already introduced mm -hmm. it for the booking process in terms of shaping how we present the booking offerings to someone who's trying to book at the hotels. From an, op from an operational perspective, the most important part for us is going the reservations process, right? The reservations process is, is, is broken down. You've got the engagement that comes in, and then it splits off to someone, right? And that splitting off goes off either into some form of a web chat, a WhatsApp chat, a Facebook chat, or an email. And, and what we've done at this point is we've introduced AI into those areas there which what it first does is it looks at the, the conversation coming in, tries to automatically respond to it. And then secondly, it looks and it goes, how do I channel manage this? By understanding what type of conversation. So that's an efficiency side of it. The second side of it is also then in the responses. So we've got this wonderful little tool that I'm not, not going to mention because I don't want to make this marketing skill. But what it does do is it automatically starts using generative AI to obviously give a response. And then key to it as well is what it's doing is, is it's helping the staff that actually either can't speak a language or speak really bad English to make sure that yes. they're writing a very nice response. And it's, and it's looking like, you know, some of the things that uh, guest review do in terms of sentiment. And it's also looking at going saying, you know, this, this customer is rather pissed off, rather attend to them first than the person at the bottom here who's in a happy mood, you know. So it's helping us rank there in, in a, number of, a number of ways. And obviously what that's doing on our side is it's helping these guys work a hell of a lot faster and it's helping us not drop revenue, you know, and, and address issues. So that's been a very, very cool way in which we've managed to introduce it in. We're talking from a, from a, from a specific guest perspective and, a, and obviously a staff perspective as well. But I think what Ladies. you've done, taken it and you've kind of set it out, you understand your customer journey, where there were That's gaps right. in AI could fill that. And um, so you're enhancing what your team were already doing and making them better by having that AI conversation in there. Yeah, I think just to just to follow on from your point, um, Amy and, and Jose, I think AI doesn't automate jobs, it automates tasks. So it's not going to re fully replace an individual's job because their job is based on multiple tasks. So it can automate some of those mundane tasks to some. free the some. 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 There are there are unfortunately, I mean, I'm even sitting in a role where I mean I'm a software developer by trade and I'm watching what's happening in the development space and it's really mm. threatening. And I'm seeing it from a from a financial space in the business, you know. I think your tactile jobs, you know, the ones that are touch and engagement, those ones are rather safe. In fact, they're going to benefit massively from this because yeah, now all yeah, of a sudden we've got so much time to spend. But there are, there is a risk component, which, which as a business and as the evolution of time and history has shown us, is you can't actually avoid it, right? It just has to yeah. find a way and things change and new jobs present themselves. Absolutely. We're evolving. Our industry is evolving. I do, I do agree. It is. Yeah. It is. There's an interesting analogy on this. Um, if you take a flight, it's very easy to to replace the pilot with technology. You know, you don't need the pilot to take off and, and land the plane and fly the plane. It's the, the pilot's there more for human confidence that the plane will take off and land. But you can't outsource the, the, the air hostess or the air host. 
you know, because it comes back to that personal touch that you were talking about, Amy. And I like, I like the idea of the, of the customer journey and understanding the customer journey. Uh, Louise, I think Jose has had more than enough time to talk. Let's, let's jump across to you and, and understand how, you know, from your perspective and Alora in terms of what you guys do, how do you leverage AI to personalize that the guest experience and improve the direct uh, uh, bookings? Because this is what's actually critical is, is to find these efficiencies and, and really automate the tasks. And I love the idea of understanding the automation of tasks rather than automation of humans. Well, I think um, that that question sort of ties in nicely to your analogy around the air hostess and and the pilot. Um, I think for us, if we think of the digital age that we're all in today, um, particularly online, um, when you we're all utilizing sort of various forms of AI um, in our everyday lives, Netflix, Amazon, Spotify, all serve up content based on our engagement history with these various applications and platforms. And I think that's exactly what Alora does. It leans into the digital journey of the guest. Alora is the online booking engine, but it leans into the digital journey of the guest and it curates an experience based on engagement history. So looking at what the guest was engaging with on the hotel's direct website and then serves up relevant content based on where they are in that booking journey. So you're not going to be shouting the same message to every guest landing on the website. It's a personalized experience based on, on their engagement with 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 the with the hotel and i think that's what's crucial it keeps a guest more engaged I, I think we've got to sort of move away from thinking personalization is by calling an individual by their name that's not personalization personalization is serving up relevant content and keeping that guest engaged it's so easy just to call me by my name because i would have used that in many sort of forms throughout um, a, a a digital journey but certainly serving up relevant content, that's what's going to keep me engaged. And that's what's going to move me on that critical booking path. Um, Alora also uses AI in other forms as well um, with, within our applications. We, we look at the retention engine, which focuses on mitigating cancellation risk by understanding um, algorithms, you know, the propensity of a guest to book mm -hmm. by using, um, you know, understanding demographic segments, you know, different credit card that they use. So we're using AI in, very, in, in many forms to sort of support just that guest engagement, but well as the, as the hotels um, to mitigate that risk. No, and it's, a, it's an important point. And Amy, can I ask you from a reputational point of view? Because ultimately, marketing is an attention. It's, it's the war for attention. And this is a critical opportunity to reinforce the love that, that happens through the experience, not just as, as you go through the experience, but the stay, the whole, the whole border framework. How, how does Guest Review use AI to really enhance that re reputation um, and, and use the feedback in a constructive manner, because as you said, it's not just using my name as a feedback process, it's more substantive and fundamental than that. Yeah, so currently guest reviews getting AI ready at the moment. We kind of um, wanted to check out what everybody was doing, what they wanted, you know, because it was, it was a buzzword that really kind of yes. took off. So, you know, where do you focus that? Do you focus that on responding to reviews? Is that going to impact you negatively? Um, you know, because obviously the more you respond organically to reviews, that helps you with your visibility. So every single hotelier, what they want to do is they want to drive direct bookings. They've got to compete against those OTAs, right? So typically you'll see like a bookings.com come up before the website, you know, so where Louise tool plays in really, really well is if they land on your website, then you're converting them. They're not going off to, you know, go and see what else is out there. You're converting that really quickly into a direct booking. What Guest Review does is it helps you drive your online reviews through those surveys to sites like TripAdvisor and Google. So it's a whole cycle. You get a guest that stays, they leave you feedback, they leave you an online review, potential guests will read that and then they might land on your website or they may go through that booking channel um, but they will ultimately then fit back into that cycle where those reviews come come through so utilizing AI we do have you know sentiment and that sort of things which does utilize AI already um, but there's a lot going on in that space at the moment and we want to make sure that we do it correctly so that the operational team can utilize AI and have the data that they need and make sure that it's 100% accurate. 
I mean, with sentiment, we know currently that it's not 100% accurate, you know, because of the English language and things like that. And when you're giving people data, it has to be accurate because that's how they're spending their budget. That's why they're refurbing room 202 with a new mattress and spending 15,000 rand or 5,000 pounds, you know? So being able to track that is all really important. At the moment, you know, sentiment can be looked at and then you've got that human element where they can go in and double check that that's correct and use other reports to back up that data. So I think we'll see a lot more in this space and, it, and it's going to be really exciting I think you know processing large large amounts of data through AI is just going to be a game changer when done right so you can beat your competitors um, you know so I do think that you know when you start looking at AI and how it's being utilized um, you know understand your journey understand what you want to, to achieve and that sort of thing and, and slot it in in the right places don't throw AI at everything use it wisely because otherwise you're going to be bankrupt and it's not going to work efficiently so you know yeah. listen to Jose who's been through that process and obviously went through every aspect quite critically as to where to put it in so that it works effectively can i i'm going to come back to the the the, the point that you you raised there around um ethics i think there's something important there but before we move off this topic um and, and really to take an extension the cost of ai and not losing that personal touch i'd like to just ask a general question here you know the cost of ai is expensive i mean i know from solving a lot of ai problems it's not a cheap problem to solve how do you go about doing this um without losing the personal touch and I, i'm i'm I, whoever wants to put their hand up to answer that first uh, I'd love to answer it, but I'm very nervous that I'm over, I'm consuming too much airtime here. So I'm a bit gentleman. Louise and Amy, you go and I'm very happy to come in afterwards. I'm just being cheeky. No, Jose, hey, give it you're very cheeky. Dude, give us your give us your points. I think we might be able to expand upon it as well. Okay. So it's actually quite funny. I literally just got off a phone call, right? About this. And I think you were talking to one point here, Amy, is there's an obsession with data, and we all understand that data itself is, a, is gold, right? It's a gold mine. I think we also overvalue the data. You know, having 8,000 data points is not exactly going to be the knees, be, the bees, in it. Be, the be all and end all, right? So the it's part me. of that, yeah, the bees, bees. So, 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 I mean, the knees, bees, you know, yes, yes. The, geez, man, this is why I don't speak English. I'll stick to, uh, I'll stick to Portuguese, guys. But... Um, <laughs> I mean, Mark, you've mentioned this as well. Is th there comes a point where you've got to make a decision and look and say, well, where do I cut the line? Okay, because the, the biggest part, the starting part of this journey is you've got to have data. Data has got to be solid. It doesn't mean you have to have an obscene amount of it, but you have to have a solid base of data from which to build your AI upon, right? And, and, and understanding what's actually going to move the needle, what's actually important to measure is where this ends, because I think it's in that building of that burst layer okay where it becomes extremely expensive okay and then the other thing is amy or oh, 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 mark i mean understand what you want to achieve okay understand what's actually going to generate revenue and just focus on those elements there because it's very sexy very easy to get distracted along the way with all these cool things that we're seeing mm -hmm. all the time Perfect. okay like chat gpt like, like chat, like chat GPT. No, it, it, it is. And I mean, if you look what Sora and the rest of it do from a video perspective, it's mind numbing. Okay. It's all you want to kind of, how do I bring it in? And that's not the, that's not the point here. So bring it down. Okay. And I think Amy, you, guest review has got maybe, a, maybe a good strategy there, which is a bit of a careful, I caution it because not for not too long, because, you know, sometimes you want to be the one in front because you get to be the disruptor mm. and you don't want to end up being the disrupted. OK, but you, you just don't hang back too far. But at least what it's doing is, is, is allowing you to to watch and see what's maybe a wrong or a right thing to do and, and learn from those. So there's a couple of ways. There's a couple of ways to move around it. I mean, I think the only thing from my side is, I mean, we want to be moving. So what we're just doing is we're doing it at a careful pace, you know, and we're understanding the data that we have, which is a very long drawn process. OK, and we have to have a significant investment into those bottom pieces. there, But we understand what we want to achieve. And, there's, and the things that we want to achieve are actually very, very fundamental and small. 
So we're not going, you know, we're not looking to 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 be uh, Elon Musk and land something on Mars and, and start populating, you know, the red sun. That that's my that's that's my take on it. Or my I, I was just going to say as well. I think it's an interesting question: the cost of AI. I also think the question should be asked: what is the cost of not using it? And I and I don't want to sort of open up something that's going to be much bigger than what we've got time for now to discuss. But I think if we don't. Yeah, I think a bit of a, a mixture of everyone's contribution. If we're not utilizing it in the best way for our business, if we're not empowering ourselves with understanding which areas we need to be focusing on, the cost could be greater for us in the longer term because our competitors are going to be doing it. So if we're not we're not jumping on the bandwagon, we're going to be left behind. So there's a there's a cost to use it and a cost not to use it too. Hmm. Good point. Uh, absolutely. Good. I mean, it, it's going to vary from property to property, right? you know, like an independent five bedroom guest house, you know, how much AI are they going to really need to utilize? Good point. Whereas like capital, absolutely they need that sort of thing. They they need to be the funky, sexy brand out there but, utilizing all the cool things. But you I know say, what, Amy, just, 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 just quickly, I want to add one thing. You know, yeah. some, that's maybe sometimes the worst, the worst idea because it's the small guys. There's only one person running that business. They could benefit the most because they don't have the staff. So it's just, they, just they, a penny for your thoughts. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. But what we kind of find is, is they're absolutely terrified <laughs> of taking that leap, right? Because hoteliers are not technology people, right? Yeah. Um, you're, you're very technology orientated and you're working for a big group and, you know, you've, you've got to move, move with the times. It's getting AI to feel comfortable for the smaller properties. So yes, it can, it can, it can do this task for you. It can do this task for you. Um, it's going to take that load off. But that step for smaller properties can be quite scary. So when we talk about AI and the utilizing it and how to get revenue from it and how you know, if we don't use it, we're not going to get revenue, we have to make that feel really seamless for the properties themselves and because this is a really new space um you know and and a whole load of new conversations going on everybody is trying to figure out where it fits in for their business are they utilizing it at the moment how is it going to work where is it going to grow so i think you know we've got to make people comfortable with technology which hoteliers typically aren't <laughs> you no, know, they, they to typically not okay. Can I, can I draw an analogy between this and the, the health industry? Because I think it's a really important point and, and you all raise really valid points. If we look at the startups in the health in, environment, they have exploded because of the potential of AI, but they are extremely value specific. You know, and to your point, I think, Amy, for a lot of the smaller players, those kind of startups can actually add a lot of value in very specific AI driven user cases, whereas the bigger organizations, and we mm -hmm. see this, and it's often a challenge for us because the larger players should be able to adopt and implement um, the, the, the fuller spectrum, whereas the smaller guys, it's a struggle. Um, and, and yeah, it's, an, it's a very interesting dichotomy, so to speak. So having a look at, and I'm just looking at the time here, just a, a thought to the future of AI in the hospitality industry. Um, I'm going to open this up generally to two or three because I'm quite sure you all have a very different viewpoint and lens given the seats that you're sitting in. Um, Jose, you can go last because we've been gentlemen here. <laughs> I, th I think the the future of AI. There's a, there's a lot of unknowns, and I think to Amy's point people are quite nervous about it, but I think we shouldn't be afraid of it. We've got to embrace and upskill and up empower ourselves with the areas that it can enhance our businesses. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't be afraid. It is going to be able to automate mundane tasks to, to make us more efficient. And I think we've got to embrace that, that area and, and run with it because if we don't, we're going to be left behind. And it's like having a baby. You can't put it back in. It's out the back. That's right. You, what a you, nice analogy. Got, Thank you. <laughs> you, you. You've got to move forward. You, you yeah. can't look behind. You have to look forward. It's a, a, so, and it's a scary reality. Amy, yeah. sorry. Sometimes, 
sometimes we wish we could put it back in. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> It's quite hard when they're, when they're 18 years old, though, because they're so fucking, you know? Get back in there. Maybe we wish it didn't go in in the first place. Oh, okay, this is going all the other places, eh? Uh, Amy, tell us about your thoughts of the future. Let's get back to the present and future of AI and not babies and children. <laughs> so, so I think AI is really, really going to be awesome for the industry, as long as you utilize it wisely. Um, you know, do your own research. Mm. Don't just go and buy from the first person that tries to sell you this amazing tool. Understand how it's going to impact your business, where you can utilize it, and how it is going to change your life, especially, you know, free up time. Give your give your front office team time to actually spend with the with the guests right in front of them instead of worrying about online chats and all that sort of thing. So understand your business, understand where it can fit in, what it can do for you, and then look for suppliers and speak to people, chat to people about how they're utilizing it, mm. what they see, what suppliers they're using. So, um, you know, I think it's going to be amazing. I think some people will go and throw it at everything and then regret it. Um, and I think some people like Jose is going to use it really, really effectively and it's going to enhance the team, enhance the bookings and be really, really smooth. So my, my, my tip is do your research, you know, speak to other people in the industry that have adopted it, because I can guarantee you after Jose put everything together, he thought of ways that he could tweak it because that's life, right? Um, you know, there's always great um, when you look back in time and think, my goodness, I really wish I'd done that or didn't do that. But it's a learning curve for everybody. It's so new. So, um, you know, I'm going to hand over to Jose because then he can tell us what he didn't like that he did. <laughs> and, and, and you've you've just set him up there so nicely. So you, you're, I did you're try. Just blind up. Yeah. Oh, you guys are very <laughs> sweet. So, so, so you know what, eh? The, let's call the near future for AI. Is hospitality right. is such a, when it comes to the technology side of things, it is so dense with service and providers and technologies that this is going to get even more convoluted, okay? Mm -hmm. And and the problem that, that, that we have with these providers is that everybody's fighting over your, your core data, your client data, your customer data, reservation data. So your near, your near present thing is you're going to have all of these entities, and it's weird because one does guest management, the other one does uh, uh, reviews, and the other one does housekeeping, but they all want the client data. So you've got this massive fight, okay, to be this, and they're all, all going to be pushing. So there's a they, 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 there's, that's the, the, the near side of it, and I think people are going to spend a lot of money, too much money. But I think when it comes to implementing these things, and and I and I fear that this is going to be the the, the you know some of the the pain or the suffering that comes out of it. What are you selling? Mm -hmm. Don't forget what you are selling. You are selling a hotel room. You are selling a product that needs to be clean. It needs to be you know these are things that still need to be done. The, the staff need to be friendly. This needs to be you know the, the food needs to be great. You know so. I still have a great product. And then if you take your guest review score, right, and you chisel that away and you go and you look at your metrics and you go the cleanliness of the room, the the use of the TV, the Wi-Fi, and just go and say, how does AI help my housekeepers be more efficient around this thing? How does it help me understand what food I should dump and not dump so I have a smaller menu so my chefs can cook and focus on, you know, th that's... That's how it's going to break those things down. I worry because the environment's going to get very noisy. People are going to spend a lot of money, and we're going to have this ecosystem that's going to become even more convoluted than it than it already is because you've got this fight over this core this core data here. But in the long term, if I go a little bit more on the positive side, it's definitely definitely strives and pushes us to get into a place where we really get to give guests an amazing, you know, personal interactive experience. I don't think robots, you know, you see it in some of these hotels, it's so gimmick. 
we don't want to see a stupid robot with a smiley face coming and giving you a tray of food. <laughs> no, I don't. That's cool. And then the internet <laughs> stops halfway and it, and, and it doesn't quite get there anyway, right? Or there's load shedding and then it's all stuffed. <laughs> and then it, or and then or it, it trips it, over the vacuum cable. 100 percent so so it's it's places where you really really get to focus back on the product because i think between the maybe the i haven't been in hospitality long enough but between you know the paper time and this time now we've still got a lot of we still still i mean it was one thing that like my mind blew up when i came to this industry was just the amount of like old school processes that in 2022 was still being done you understand? So getting rid of that, yeah, it's still hot, it's nuts. So, so really, the, the, the future is getting rid of that. But I think, I think what also needs to happen, Mark, and I promise you, I'm going to shut up after this one, is the next generation needs to come. Unfortunately, because they are the ones who, when you go to them and say, "You're dirt like this," they're like, "Wow, why would I ever do it like that?" And off it goes. You know, they throw it. I'm thinking about that scene where in Star Wars where she comes and gives him the lightsaber and just throws the lightsaber over his head and he doesn't want to use the damn thing anymore. But there's deeper reasons there. I was watching too much Star Wars over the weekend, guys. <laughs> but clearly, 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 clearly. Amy, <laughs> th th thank you for allowing me to host here and ask the question. I'm going to hand back to you because Jose is out of control. <laughs> and Louise is still well behaved like she always is. So. I, I always get a prep talk before I do these things, right? Don't mention sex, don't swear, be polite. Jose swore, I mentioned sex, so we're really <laughs> <laughs> And, and on that note. <laughs> and on that note, that's all from us at Back of House Banter. We hope you enjoyed it. Sarah, good luck with the editing. It's gonna be awesome. There's gonna be planes falling out of skies and robots kicked downstairs. <laughs> and Jose talking the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you. everyone. Thanks.